Good morning, everyone. I have came out to the garage first thing to check on my Rhode Island Red Pullets that I purchased a week or so ago. Um, I have 12 of them and they are staying in the garage in a brooder. So first thing I do every morning is come out and check on these chicks and make sure they, well, their food and water always needs to be topped off and cleaned out. So um, I always clean the brooder tray out and I'm just gonna show y'all the steps that I take to get this done. Good morning, babies. I'm gonna get y'all all cleaned out. So I'm going to go ahead and put their tray back in. And then we're going to take a peek inside and see how these babies have grown. Good morning, little ones. Come here, babies. Come here. We're going to get you all cleaned out. Got to get those waters cleaned out. Look how nasty y'all made them. That's okay. We'll get y'all all fixed up. Oh my goodness. That one acted like the other one had something. I'm going to get their waters out. And instead of using the water hoses in the backyard where Gidget and Arlo are, I'm going to go around to the side porch and use that nice sink that we have over there to fill up these waters and I'll just show y'all what we add to it that helps our chicks. So I made it around here to the side porch where we have our big farmhouse sink and y'all can't believe how handy this thing has came in just the week or two that we've had it. It has been especially handy for us to wash our hands out here and not take our grimy selves inside, but especially it's come in handy with filling up these chick waters. And um, I just wanted to, to kind of show y'all the steps that we take here to get chick's waters cleaned up and make sure everything is fresh and healthy for them. So I'm just gonna rinse them out real good and make sure I get all of the the base of it completely clean and I do have a brush that I could use but I feel like my fingers get in these tight spots a lot better than a brush does I've even got one sitting here but you can see that the I mean I may just need a different size brush but it's just as easy for me to use my hand as it is a brush so I'm just gonna make sure I get the inside rinsed out and the whole reason that we don't have a slimy issue. If you've had chicks and you've used the water, you know that the inside of these feeders tend to get like a slimy buildup on them. Well, what we do is we take um, apple cider vinegar, and this is with the mother, unpasteurized, not flavored apple cider vinegar. That will not work. This is real apple cider vinegar, unpasteurized with the mother. But what we do is we just take probably a cap full. I'm not gonna measure it out, but just, just a little smidgen will do you and put it in those waters. And it helps to prevent that slimy buildup that you have inside your waters if you just use regular water. And plus it's beneficial to the chicks. Now it doesn't help with parasites or anything like that, but it just puts um, goodness into their gut that they can use at this point. So you see how it kind of bubbles up when you add the vinegar. 
but it does a wonderful job at keeping those waters from getting that slime buildup. All right, we got those filled up and I'm gonna take them back to them and check out their food. I've brought their clean waters back and they've, I've already cleaned out their little pad, but y'all look at the mess they made in just that amount of time that it took me to go fill up their waters. Okay, babies, we got y'all some fresh water. Now, look at y'all. Y'all are growing so fast. Hear something? Huh? Oh no, you can't come out. So I got the uh, chicks all taken care of and Mary Carl's out there taking care of worming her pigeons this morning. So while she's doing that, Gidget, Gidget's upset because she didn't get to play in the water hose this morning. Okay. So while Mary Carl's doing that, I'm gonna take my tractor over to the big school bus and clean it out and show y'all um, what my plans are for that piece of machinery. So since most of our other animals have parasites and worms, does that mean the pigeons have worms too? And the answer is most likely yes, because the birds are, the free flying, the free flyers are going to the goat pen, they're eating the grass seeds. And that's where the goats have walked. And that means that the birds have probably contracted worms from the goats. So that means we're gonna have to worm the pigeons as well. But we're gonna do it a little bit differently than how we did the goats and the other animals. So what I've done is I've put all of the birds in here. It's not usually this many birds in one loft. They are divided into the aviary and the three lofts. So this is all my birds. And I believe it's around 50. So these are the birds I'm going to be deworming. And we are going to put a powder in their water, which I will show for the deworming. And yep, I've got a lot of birds in here. So this is the dewormer I'm using for the pigeons. And it is a powder called Leva Missile. I believe that's how you say it. And I got it from Boys Pet Supplies. It is a pigeon, a pigeon supply store. And it, it is four teaspoons per gallon for one day. And then you repeat in 10 to 12 days. So that's what I'm gonna be using for their water. And I mix four teaspoons into my gallon waters. So we're going to use four teaspoons of this powder. So I've got one filled and I'm going to do another one since I've got all the birds in there and they'll have two waters. And the birds are drinking the dewormer water. What my plan is to do today is to go over to the Cog County School Bus and show y'all a peek inside and also what my plans are with the Rhode Island Red Pullets that I just showed you, but also show you what we use for nesting material that we think has been a lifesaver. Um, it, they don't have to be changed out very often. These are called um, poultry nesting pads and we're not sponsored by these people. So uh, this is just something, a, a bit of information I'd like to share with y'all because I found that it's helped me. But what they are is they're um, poultry nesting pads and it's like a, it's just a fiber that is made with a paper backing. And what happens over time is if you put shavings in a nesting box, chickens tend to pick it up and and kind of move it around so they can lay their egg the way they want it. Well, this material, it's all bound on there. So their ability to, to waste the nesting material is eliminated. Um, over time, 
we do have to replace these pads because they do start to disintegrate. They start to get nasty. And then I'll show you, ours are literally down to nothing because there's, we've been using them for so long that they have um, getting in and out of them eventually takes the fibers away. But we have found that this is a wonderful way to keep your nesting boxes tidy and neat. I want to tell y'all what my plans are for this mobile chicken coop. Jason's daddy had a, has an electrical business and he used to tow these trailers to job sites and have material that they would use on the job in this trailer. However, he's recently slowed his business down tremendously as he's gotten older and he doesn't need to take big trailers like this to the job site. So he offered to give them to us in which we were happy to accept because at the time we were in the process of moving and needed somewhere for our chickens to go. Well, initially I thought what better idea than to put our chickens in this and move them around out on our pasture area for um, the ability for them to be on green grass all the time. Well, as time drew nearer and we got moved over here, we felt that that might not be such a good idea because we didn't know what our predator pressure would be over here. Meaning we didn't know um, what coyotes, um, raccoons, we didn't know what we would be facing. But after being here over a year, we realized that Foxy, our Great Pyrenees, and our um, <laughs> Emu Nugget over there, Sheriff Nugget, they do a really good job at keeping keeping things away that shouldn't be here preying on our chickens and livestock during the nighttime hours especially. So my plan with the Rhode Island Reds, the pullets that I just took care of in the garage, is to move this coop around with my tractor by using this um, hitch that's on the front of it. Now, my tractor has a bucket on the front of it, but I also have a, a attachment where I can put a hitch like on the back of a truck on the front of the tractor. And it, that will enable me to pull it exactly where I wanna move it using the tractor versus having to figure out how I'm gonna get a truck up to this height. My tractor bucket obviously goes up and down, so that'll come in handy. Um, now my plan is to keep these birds that we have had for years that all have names in this area. They're not used to having to stay in one particular area. They have always been known to completely free range. And for the most part, they stay in this fenced in area, but they still, they don't, they're not in a super confined area. So uh, Jason and I have decided that we will use this green coop over here that was originally for silkies only when we moved over here. And we will teach all of the birds that are our old birds that all have names that have been here for years how to go in that coop versus the bus because we're gonna take the bus out of here. And the, the bus is, is, is not, not a good visual when you're looking at our our front door of our house over there, the first thing that you see when you turn around is straight across Cog County School Bus. Another reason for wanting to make this coop mobile is to get it out of here and move it around our property. So we have Premier One chicken netting um, that we're gonna put around it, surrounding it, and it will have a electric fence charger on it. And then we have an omelet automatic chicken door that we're gonna put on the side of it here. And we'll have a ramp that goes from the ground into the chicken tractor that the chickens can use to assess the inside at night and it'll close behind them. 
Now, just say that um, we, we need to be able to get in there and we'll continue to use the same route that we've always used, which is this set of stairs here and a door that allows us to go in and gather eggs. Today, I got a nasty job and that's cleaning out this coop. And I'm not cleaning it out because we're fixing to move the pullets around. They're not near about ready. But I'm cleaning it out because if you don't keep things tidy, then birds will get sick. Um, we don't do any feeding inside here. This is simply for sleeping at night and laying eggs. And um, that's what it'll be once we do move the, the pullets around the Rhode Island Reds. We're not going to put any food in here. Their food will be outside, surrounded by the Premier One electrified netting. Their water will be outside. They'll simply lay eggs in here and sleep in here. So y'all come along with me while I replace these old worn out nesting pads. So I'm now inside the Cog County School Bus where I have cleaned out the nesting boxes and have them ready to put the new pads in but I'm going to first clean out the inside of the coop because I don't want those nesting pads to get all dirty when I'm cleaning out the coop. So before I put the new pads in, I'm gonna just do a quick clean up of the bottom of the coop. And what we have in ours, it's a, it's a metal mesh. And we thought initially that most of the poop would fall through. Well, it does, except for not most of it. It's, uh, it's probably about 50% of it falls through and about 50% is left. So um, I come in about once a week and I just use a flat shovel and I collect all the it's accumulated under the roost. Um, they don't spend any time in here unless they're laying eggs or sleeping. Now, number one thing is you gotta wear a mask. So I always wear a mask and then I have me a small container of some sort that's lightweight that I can use to go from the inside of the coop to the bucket of the tractor to my compost pile. So um, I'm just gonna, gonna show you how much is accumulated over the course of the week here in our coop and how easy it is for me to, to clean it up. So you can see a lot of feathers have been mixed in and that's just simply because it's molten season. Now the first thing I'll do is take the edge of my shovel and just go, go across the top of the roost. And then the second thing is just to pull it out from the wall and you can see a lot of it, a lot of it is falling through. Um, the way the grates are made, if you give it a little shove, it falls through, which that's fine but I do use it in a compost pile so we can put it in our garden. So uh, let me see how much I can get out of here. If you're a gardener, you know that chicken poop is super high in nitrogen, which means it'll burn your plants if you put it on there just like it is. So I will take this to the compost pile where I'll add it in and turn it. And we know that this particular compost pile, we're not gonna use it for at least a year um, to make sure that that has broken down and in usable fashion so it doesn't burn our plants. All right, so I got the coop cleaned out. It is still some little bit of residue left, but hey, it's not meant to be perfect. It's a chicken coop. I did want to mention one secret, and that secret is this box didn't get cleaned out. And there's a reason for that. And the reason is there's a broody Muscovy duck in this box. She has tried and tried and tried to 
successfully hatch baby ducks sitting on her eggs i don't know how many she's got under there but we won't tell jason about it because he's just talked about how he's trying to contain his war on ducks messing up waterers you're not going to do that are you girl neither you nor your babies so i'm just going to go over and work around her and put the nesting pads in the boxes so as i told you before it's a it's a pad that has a back on it that is already pre-cut to a nesting box size now pretty much all nesting boxes are universal so you shouldn't have to go in there and trim it you're just going to let it sit in there naturally and conform to the the box size and i have a total of 16 nesting boxes here when my rhode island red pullets go to school so to speak I'm going to take one of these boxes out and put it in that green coop over there and let those girls that are going to be newly laying have eight nesting boxes, which is ample enough space for 12 hens. You will have those that want to continuously lay in the same box and that's just, that's just the way it goes. Um, but eight, eight holes for 12 chickens is plenty. So I'll give these girls that have been in here for such a long time eight additional boxes in the green coop and that'll be, that'll be enough space for everybody. Now look how easy this is. If I were to get somebody to, to make a mess in one of these nesting boxes, I can pull it off and dispose of that. Oh, you ready to lay, aren't you girl? Let me get you a pad in. I'm working my way down. Which one you want? I'm gonna skip you, Muscovy girl. They're gonna be so happy with fresh nesting material that I might get an egg before I leave out of here. Uh -oh. I didn't bring quite enough. One short. Let me go grab that last one. Go ahead, girl. Last one. All right. So, another thing I forgot to mention is that um, I did say there were a lot of feathers in here. And the reason there's a lot of feathers is because we have some chickens that are molting. But you know what that means? These feathers get added to the compost, which in turn breaks down and adds good amendments to our soil. So, and it just kind of depends on your chickens, how many you have, as to how often you'll need to change these pads out. I have found that they will last me about six months, but there again, it just depends on the number that you have. And so while I did not get in here with a brush today and a water hose, to do a deep clean, that is something that we do once a year, usually in the spring. Um, no particular rhyme and reason for it being during the spring, that's just when it usually comes time to do it. I could do it anytime because I have the ability to just get in here with a water hose and squirt it out, but I just don't feel it's necessary to get in here and do a deep clean right now because um, I hadn't been long ago done it. But all I would do differently is just take some, some vinegar and water in a spray bottle and spray off the perches and just kind of brush them down a little bit. And, um, and that would allow it to, to just get a little bit cleaner in here as long as, and as well as using a water hose to spray the walls down in the boxes. But for now, I think this is sufficient. So we're entering our garden area where we have our greenhouse and then you can see over that way, we have a tarp for our winter garden. But tucked over here neatly in a corner is our compost pile. And we actually have two. We have one that consists of our older matter and then one that consists of uh, newer stuff that we need to wait a, a little bit of time before we use it. 
So I'm going to put this in the pile with the newer stuff. Because you can see over here on this other side, that's the older stuff. You can see how it's composted. But Jason has recently cleaned out the green stalks and he put the, the plants that we were no longer going to use in there. And watch, watch, this may not seem like much, but over time, this will accumulate into pure black gold. And I'm just going to take my bucket here and go in and pick up a scoop all the way down to the bottom. Pick it up and turn it over. And look at all of that. And that literally, the majority of that has came from cleaning out poops. And if we do go through a period of time where we haven't had rain, we will wet that down so that it continued to break down. Look at that. That's beautiful. I'm gonna show y'all what the other one looks like and see if you can tell a difference in the, the older material versus the newer material. how black it is. Let's see if you can see it now. Look at that. And I try to do this every time I dump something over here just to keep it fresh and aerated and look at that. Wonderful. Plus I enjoy it. easy that is. Just pick up that dirt and turn it around. All right. So I hope y'all enjoyed cleaning out the chicken coop today. And I'll keep y'all up to date on how my nesting pads are doing.